I have to say this is an interesting move here only because it's come so close to the election. Where has it been and why the volatility spike just right now, days before? Well, as you pointed out uh, just before I got on, the markets really right now, over the very near term, the pullback is likely being driven by the rise in COVID cases, the upcoming election, and the breakdown in stimulus talks. So those are the things that likely are driving the market over the near term. Uh, we think it's important to point out that parts of the economy are prospering during this downturn and have actually gotten stronger, but other parts of the economy have been left behind. So it's really a bifurcated economy. I think as you look ahead right now, one of the important things we're sort of focusing on is the fact that if you look back at economic cycles and look at economic data since the late 1940s, economic expansions typically last about six years or so, whereas economic contractions typically last about three months. So we think we're in the early stages of a longer economic cycle, but clearly we're going through a pullback or a period of at least near-term weakness. What do you do ahead of the election, if anything? Or is this just noise? Or do you wait? Do you say, let's wait until things shake out? Let's wait until maybe a week or so after the election? Let's wait until we actually know what's going to happen with the next four years in the White House. How exactly do you position? Well, as investment advisors, we really want to look at the facts. We want to find out who's going to be in office. We want to know what the tax rates are going to be before we make any large changes for client portfolios. So at this point, we're sort of monitoring the situation. And once the election facts are known, then we'll have a better idea on what type of changes we potentially may want to make uh, on the investment side of our portfolios. Are you perhaps worried, optimistic, pessimistic, a little bit more so on any one candidate that gets into the White House or any change of power in Congress? What exactly is the trajectory for the U.S. economy, regardless of who's in, the, in office at this stage? Well, I think it's important. The two candidates are obviously very different in a number of ways, and their outlook for the economy is quite different. But I think one thing that is common between the two is no matter who the upcoming president will be, we're likely to see more fiscal policy. And that should provide at least a backstop and a little bit of tailwind for the economy as we head into 2021. So no matter who the candidate is, candidate is there will be sectors of the economy and there'll be companies that are likely to perform better. But we think the stimulus package that either president puts forth would likely provide some positives for the economy. And obviously, we probably won't have a full-blown economic expansion until we have a vaccine. There are some promising candidates around right now, but we still don't have that to really get consumer and business confidence back on track. All right. So, Michael, we've got about just a minute left here. Let's say there is a possible scenario where sectors outperform or underperform given each particular candidate or outcome. Are there sectors you focus on in the event President Trump wins or President or Vice President Joe Biden wins in terms of sectors overall? There'll certainly be areas of the economy that we may under or overweight. But right now, I think it's important to have a barbell approach because we just don't know. There are a lot of unknowns right now. So, for example, even though technology is down today, we think there's an exciting opportunity in areas like 5G, artificial intelligence, and e-commerce. We also own technology, excuse me, we also own healthcare as sort of a barbell or GARP approach. And then we own some consumer discretionary stocks and industrial stocks because we do think that we're in the early stages of an economic cycle, even though there will be some bumps along the road. So uh, one thing the candidates do have in common, by the way, is, is infrastructure spending. So we think that's a possibility that both candidates may agree on, and that could be an area that we add to. But again, we need to find out more about what the makeup of Congress will be as we head through the next several days. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.